Alrighty, so here we have the read and got it for 4-6. Problem 1, identifying functions using mapping diagrams. So remember, we talked about the idea of a function um, and how the domain relates to the range. So to identify the domain and range of each function. Represent the relation with a mapping diagram. Is the relation a function? So obviously here we have, you know, the, uh, we have some xy sets right here, some relationships. So 2.05, 0, 2.5, 0, 4, 6.5. 5, 2.5. So if we list all the domains, again, that's taking all the x's, negative 2, 0, 4, 5, writing them here. And then the ranges, or the y's, 0 0.5, 2 0.5, 6.5, 2.5, 2.5, putting them here. So we have the domain and the range, and we list them in order. Now, we look here and we drew the mapping diagram. That's this part, represents a relation with a mapping diagram. So I draw arrows, the negative 2 goes to 2.5, the 0 to the 2.5, so on and so forth. Now, here's the thing. Um, each domain only points to one range. Now, yes, I do know that 5 and 0 both point to the same range, but they still each only point to 1. Now, this is not a 1 to 1 function, but it is a function because each domain only points to one range. Now, example B here, um, again, listing them out, uh, listing out our domains, in order, 4, 5, 6, right, so 6, 4, 6, 5, and the ranges, 5, 3, 4, 8, in order, 3, 4, 5, 8, and then, again, we do the mapping, so 4 points to 3, 5 points to 8, but 6 points to 4 and 5. Now, because a single item in the domain points to two things in the range, that means it is not a function. Again, the difference is over here, yes, I have two different domains that point to one range, but over here I have one domain that points to two ranges. It's an important distinction to make. That makes B not a function. All right, an example on the next slide. So like just like in the last slide, it says identify the domain and range of each relationship. So do that first. So you go through and take all, so for, for A, take all the X's, right, right there, and you write them here in a list. And then you take all the Y's and you write them here in a list. So now I've identified the domain and range. And you do have to do this on my test. Then on my test, I'll ask you, um, is it a function? Now, I won't tell you you have to represent it with a mapping diagram, but I'm telling you right now, it'd be a good idea, because then you can see the difference. So here, I can see that 4.2 points to two of them. So one domain points to two ranges means it's not a function. Likewise with B, again, I list them out, 1, negative, or negative 1, negative 2, 4, and 7, and I write them, you know, write them here in domain. Then I take all the y's, 1, 2, negative 4, negative 7, and I put them in a list, that's the range. Again, you will have to do the test. Then I'll say, hey, is it a function? So you map them out. So notice up here that negative 2 points to 2, negative 1 points to 1, so again, they match up, right? Um, and then 4 to 4 and 7 to negative 7. This is a function because a single domain item does not point to 2 on the range. So there you go, that is a function. This is very similar to a test question. So besides the mapping we did in the last slide, another way, another way to identify a function is to use the vertical line test, which I think I've already alluded to in class, and it was on your vocab. So what that means is you take your list of points and you plot them. So negative 4, 2, right? So negative 4, 2. Uh, where's that? Where's my, oh, there we go. Yeah, negative 4, 2 up here, right? Uh, negative 3, 1, so on and so forth, and you plot each of them. Then you draw a perfectly vertical line through each point, and we find that if you ever hit two points with that perfectly vertical line, at the, if you hit two points at the same time, it is not a function. It is not a function. Likewise, so over here, now instead of just giving you a set of points over here, I've actually given you something to graph, right? And you get to pick your points that you're going to graph. Just like we practiced, just like we talked about. Uh, so you graph it, right? It looks like this. And again, we know if it's squared, it's going to look like this. By the way, if you start noticing certain things about these, if I make the x negative, it turns this upside down. Adding 3 moves it from here up 3. So this, this apex right here moves from 0, 0 all the way up to 3. You'll start hopefully noticing those, and there's certain patterns you're going to have to kind of learn as we do this. But anyway, so I go through and draw vertical lines, all of them that I want. And the great thing is, if you look at all, the, if you look, do this on graph paper, I've literally, you already have the vertical lines in there. And if any of them goes through two points, then you do not have a function. But this one, 
and that does not happen. So the vertical line test, it passes the vertical line test, and we find out that this is indeed a function. So we're going to find out here A and B if we have functions. We're going to do that by graphing these points and using a vertical line test. I've already given you the answer, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just a second, I'll pop them up here. Okay, so um, I've graphed those for you. And if we take a look here and I draw vertical lines through dots, right? So if I go like this and like this and like this, literally vertical lines, right? And like this. I don't hit two points uh, with any vertical line. So yes, A is a function. Yes. And if I do the same thing over here with uh, B through here, oh, through this one, almost went through it, there we go, through here, through here, never get straight lines apparently. Um, but here I do hit two, right, here and here at the same time, so this one is not a function, not a function. Alrighty, so uh, there you go, let's move on to the third one. Okay, so I thought I was recording, but I wasn't, so I wrote some stuff on here. Anyway, evaluating a function. This says reading the function, w of x. Again, that's kind of like, uh, you know, w of x means y, right? It's like y equals 250x, but we say w of x, right? That whole function notation. Anyway, uh, it represents the number of words, w of x again, or y, you can read in x minutes. x is the input, number of minutes. w of x, or y really, is the output, right? The number of words that you can read. Um, so anyway, so this is a plug and chug idea. So put that 8 in uh, for x, and 250 times 8 is 2,000. So w of 8, in other words, um, or y, right, is 2,000. Don't forget to label words in a minute. All right, so your third got it. Use the function in problem 3. That's w of x equals 250x. Uh, how many words can you read in 6 minutes? So again, simple plug and chug exercise here. w of x equals 250 times 6 and we know that 250 times 6 is 1500 don't forget to label words alrighty there's your got it 3 okay so problem 4 finding the range of a function so the domain f of x I'm sorry the domain of f of x uh, equals negative 1.5x plus 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. In other words, they're giving you the x's. They want to know what is the output or what is the range. So this is your plug and chug. So you plug in a 1, right, into negative uh, 1.5 times x plus 4, and you generate 2.5. Plug in a 2, there it is, you get a 1. Plug in a 3, you get negative 0.5. Plug in a 4, and you get negative 2. So when I give you the domain, domain 1, 2, 3, 4, your range is negative 2, negative 0.5, 1, and 2.5. And again, that's just putting them in uh, numerical order. That's obviously not the way they came out up here, right? So kind of reverse order, but there you go. Uh, so how to find the range? Plug in each of the domain, and there you go, and you get ordered pairs. Okay, so here we have um, g of x equals 4x minus 12. So g of x, remember that just really means y, equals 4 x minus 12. So you're going to start plugging in numbers, right? Plug in a, sorry, plug in a 1. So we're going to plug in here. Let me get rid of that uh, line. There we go. So you're going to plug in a 1 first. And so we're going to have uh, g of 1, right? Notice plug in the x there, equals 4 times 1 minus 12. So g of 1 equals 4 minus 12. 4 minus 12 then is negative 8, so g of 1 equals negative 8. And you're just going to plug in each one, one at a time. So and you'll end up generating, in order, this, uh, this range right here. So you can try out each one. If you get stuck on one, raise your hand. We'll talk about it. But again, uh, plug them in one at a time. Plug in 1, plug in 3, plug in 5, plug in 7, and then generate this set as your range. Okay, so... Problem five gets the idea of reasonableness of answers, especially your domain and range. Uh, you know, like we always talk about, you can never put in negative time. Um, I guess, like, except for what that uh, that garbage dump problem, where you think about, oh, I can go back in time because they kind of started in mid range. Uh, but otherwise, you can't. You can't uh, put negative people in, right? You can't put parts of people. Uh, you know, things like this. So, painting. You have three quarts of paint to paint the trim in your house. A quart of paint covers one hundred feet squared, or one hundred square feet. The function. A of Q, 
where Q is quartz equals 100Q represents the area A of Q in square feet that Q quartz of paint covers. So again, each quart covers 100 uh, square feet. What domain and, range are reason domain and range are reasonable for the function? What is the graph of the function? So a couple questions there. First, you know, one quart covers, right? And you have three quarts of paint. Reasonable domain and range values in the order, so you need to figure that out. And plan, again, find the least and greatest amounts of paint you can use uh, and areas of trim you can cover. Use the values to make a graph. So the least amount of paint you can use is none, right? You can't use negative quarts of paint. So zero is definitely the uh, smallest number in your domain. So the least value, again, domain is zero. You have only three quarts of paint, so the most you can use is three quarts. By the way, if you need a fourth quart, you might as well buy a gallon, right? The greatest domain value is three. So the domain, ooh, we like this, right? Uh, some inequality fund from zero to three inclusive. I don't know why you do zero. It means you do no work. I hate painting, so maybe I'd be in for that. To find the range, evaluate the function using the least and greatest domain values. So A of 0, right? So 100 or 0 plugged into there gives us 0. A of 3, the biggest, gives us 300. So the range is between 0 and 300. Now again, you could have easily just put in a Y here, but in this case, since we're talking about that whole function notation, put in A of Q. To graph the function, make your table. So 0, 1, 2, 3. And this one does make sense to be a continuous function because you can literally put in 1.5 quarts. You could put in a couple of drops, right? Whatever, I guess it would be. Um, yes, this doesn't really account for the whole idea of, you know, how much uh, paint is sucked into the paintbrush and things like that, but we're not going to worry about that in this problem. But again, 0 yields 0, 1 yields 100, 2 yields 200, 3 yields 300. And there's a graph of that function. Alrighty, so got it 5. If you have 7 quarts of paint, it's the same problem. What domain and range are reasonable for problem 5? Same thing. Um, you plug in everywhere from 0 this way all the way down to 7 quarts. Again, once you hit that gallon mark, though, to save some money, you probably want to, you know, buy gallons instead, but it's still 4 quarts. So, A of Q equals 100Q. Plug it in. 0 is still 0. 1 still gets 100. 2 still gets 200. All the way down to 7 gives you 700. So, the domain is from 0 to 7, right? can't go beyond that because that's you don't have more. You can't go below that because you can't take paint off the wall. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, uh, then your range yields everywhere from 0 to 700. Again, notice inclusive is the idea. Part B of this we already talked about. Why does it not make sense to have a domain value less than 0 or greater than 3 in problem 5? Because again, in this case, you can't use less than 0 quarts of paint um, and you can't use more than the 3 that you have. And in this one, you couldn't use more than the 7 that you have. There you go, domain and range with a function.